Uh, uh, hi everyone and welcome back uh, to this series of electrical A1 circuit PEO exam and this is from the May 2022 so this is one of the exams that happens after the pandemic okay and basically this question is about nodal analysis I did so far three questions in the nodal analysis but I found this one has a different idea than the previous questions that I have done, as we will see in this question. So let's see how to uh, solve this question. So basically here, you have a circuit that's composed for, from uh, DC sources, voltage sources only, and the resistor. So this is a DC analysis question, but here specifically it says use node voltage method. So you have, to use basically the node voltage method. You cannot use any other technique. Then once you are done with this, you need to find V0 and you need to find your VA. Okay, so how to uh, approach the node? First, you have to uh, identify the node. So this is one node. This is another node. This is another node same node and this is the last one is one last node so you choose one node as a reference we use this one now why i selected this to be v equal to zero our reference node because this is connected to two voltage supplies so this will somehow simplify the question why because now this node is the voltage between this point to the ground is equal to 150 volt and this node uh, also, which is uh, between this point to the ground, is minus 50 volt. Okay, now I'm left with node, this node and that node. So I will call this is V1 and this is V2. Okay, so every node now in the circuit, it either has a reference point or a value or a variable. We are set. Now we start to apply uh, nodal analysis, which is basically KCL in terms of the node voltages. So just to remind you, if I have a resistance R, this is V1 and this is V2, if the current assumed in that direction, so this current will be V1 minus V2 over R. So always we express the current in terms of the node voltages. Okay. And these node voltages has between them has to be a uh, resistance. Now, when you look to node number one, V1 and V2, so we have two unknowns, so we need two equations to solve for that. Both V1 and V2 is connected to a voltage supply. If we are having a node connected to voltage supply, we do not apply KCL because we will have to assume a current here in this uh, in this branch, and this current will be a third unknown, so you are complicating the problem. So how to solve for this? The first thing we do, basically, is we first we use this two nodes between them, the voltage supply, and you can say is the V2 minus V1 is equal to 75, and this is your first equation. So the difference between V2 and V1 is the 75 volt that you have. Now, why it is V2 minus V1, not V1 minus V2? Because the plus side of the voltage supply is connected to V2. Okay, so that's the first equation. I need one more. So the same point here, I will assume that this is all as one node. We call it super node. Okay, so we apply KCL, apply KCL, to the super node. So what's a super node? It's basically a node that is between, between them there is a voltage supply. So I do not care about the current between these two nodes. I care about the current that is coming outside from this node. So we have one current, two, three, and four currents. The current in between, I don't care about. So since I have four currents, then I have to have in my KCL four different uh, terms in the equation. So the current to the left, this current is V1 minus 150 divided by 100. Now, I assume all the currents are leaving. 
And the reason for that, just for consistency, you can assume any current direction you want, okay? And as far as current enter the node equal to the current leaves the node. So this is the most important thing. Other than that, you can assume any current direction. So this current is leaving plus this current that goes down is V1 minus zero divided by 200. Now we go to the other side of the super node, which is now V2 plus V2 minus the current that goes down here minus minus 50 divided by 200 plus V2, the last current to the far right, minus zero divided by 100 is equal to zero. Okay, so now I need just to put the equation in a better way. So I will multiply by the least common denominator, which is times 200. So basically you will have two V1 minus 150 plus V1 plus V2 plus 50 plus two V2 equal to zero, two V1, V1. So we'll have here three V1. V2, 2V2, plus 3V2, minus 300, plus 250, minus 250, equal to 250, and this is my second equation. So we have two equations with two unknowns. So from one, you can say that your V2 is equal to 75 plus V1. So this is, let's say, equation three. So we will substitute. 3 in 2, so to eliminate your V2, so we will have 3 V1 plus 3 V2, which is 75 plus V1 equal to 250, so 6 V1 equal to 250 minus 3 times 75, which is 225, and this will give me 25, so your V1 is 25 divided by 6, which is equal to 4.167 volt. Your V2 is 75 plus V1, which is 79.167 volt. So that is your first objective. Before finding the unknowns in the nodal, you need to find every single node. As I said, this is a ground, so this is zero. This is 150 because it's given to you because of the voltage supply. This is minus 50. So we lift with only V1 and V2. Now, after we finish from this, now we are set. Your now V1 is equal to 4.167. Your V2 is equal to 79.167. Now we won't need to find V0. So your V0 is plus minus, so it is 150, okay? Uh, remember, this is basically your V1, and this is your V2, minus V1, which is 4.167, and this will give me 145.83, and your VA is the voltage between V2 and the ground, so it's V2, actually, so VA is V2, which is 79.167. So with this, we are done with the V0 and VA. Then it says calculate the current in each branch. So let's see how many currents do we have. We have one, two, three, four, five branches. We have five currents. Okay, so since the polarity is in this way and this is the plus, so assume the current, this is your I1. This is your I2, this is your I3, I4, and I5. Now, since I know the node voltages, then I can find all the currents. So your I1 is equal to the current going from the supply to V1. So it is the 150 minus your V1, which is 4.1. 67 divided by the resistance in between, which is 100, and this will give me 1.458. Now I'm do some approximation, okay? So basically you will have some error, but that's very negligible on it. I2, the current that goes down, so it is V1, 
which is 4.167 divided by 200 and this will give me 0 0.02084 amps your I3 is equal to V2 which is 79.167 minus minus 50 divided by the 200 and this will give me 0.6458 your I4 is equal to V2 which is the 79.167 divided by the 100 and this will give me 0.79167 so all these currents they have the resistive part so using ohm's law now we'll come here to the supply that has only the voltage source we keep it to the end now your i5 ecl here is equal to i3 plus i4 you add these two currents and you will get 1.4375 amps so this is how we found this current now the last part show that the magnitude of the total power generated equal to the total power absorbed now we found that i1 in this direction and we have we we have also i3 in that direction i5 in this direction so the currents that coming from all the sources are basically leaving the positive and they are positive in value so it means that all these three sources are basically supplying energy because the current that we calculate was positive and was basically coming from the positive terminal so if it's both positive then it means these three batteries are all of them are supplying energy now what if for example i1 was in that direction or i1 going up is a negative it means the current goes into the supply if the current goes into the supply it becomes like you are charging a battery so this will be consuming energy so this is very very important again here to summarize so the voltage supply here it supplies energy if the current i is leaving the positive and the current itself has a positive value if the current enter or leaves with a negative sign then it means that the, the energy source is basically is charged so we, let's calculate all the power coming from the three supplies so we have p coming from the 150 supply is equal to 150 the volt times the current which is i1 which is 1.458 and this will give me 218.7 watt the p that is basically coming out of the 75 supply is equal to the 75 times i5 which is 1.4375 this is equal to 107.812 watt finally the power coming out of the 50 volt supply is 50 times your i3 uh, uh, your i3 which is basically uh, 0.6458 and this will give me a total power equal to 32.29 when you add the total power that is generated you add all of them is approximately 358 but of course there are some fractions we just ignore those fractions now let's talk about the power that's absorbed now for the power absorbed by the resistor is always i square r the resistors cannot i will never be able to produce energy so all the resistors blindly you can tell they are basically absorbing so we'll have i will call this is this is p1 p2 p3 and p4 so p1 is equal to i1 square times 100 your i1 is 1.458 square times 100 and this will give me 212.576 watt p2 is equal to i2 square times 200 which is basically 0.0 2084 square times 200 and this will give me 0 0.08686 watt p3 is will be 
i3 squared times 200 and this will give me 0 0.6458 squared times 200 and this will give me 83.4115 what finally b4 is equal to i4 squared times 100 and this will give me 62.674 watt when you add the total power absorbed is equal approximately 358 watt so the power that is generated is equal to the power that is basically absorbed and this is the full answer to this question